From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, Ropecast listeners, and welcome to a new episode. I'm Roger Charlton, and with me in the studio today, instead of Peter Tischer, I have a guest from the UK, straight from Bristol. Welcome, Roz. Thank you. Um, You may wonder where Peter Tischer is. Well, I called him with this idea of having a podcast about Bristol, and this is what I heard. Hi, Peter. It's Roger. Hi. Yeah, how are you doing? Fine. What about you? I'm fine. You have a moment? Yeah, sure. Uh, Peter, I have a couple of topics for our Roadcast series. Yeah, sure. The first one is on English gardens. Oh, my God. I don't know the first thing about gardens. I mean, they're green, (laughs) there are flowers in them, but frankly speaking, gardening is not really my thing. I have an English-speaking expert who could help with that. Well, go ahead, take him. By the way, I'm on vacation in August anyway. It's better you record this with him. There's a second topic, too, and that is about the city of Bristol. Bristol. Yeah, it's in Great Britain. (laughs) Get somebody else for that, too? I have someone in mind. Well, okay. Why don't you do two all-English or all-British podcasts, and I'll be back after that, after my vacation. How's that? Fine, yes. Okay. So have fun doing that, and uh, say hello to our listeners for me. Okay. Enjoy your break. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So we have to manage without him today, and I'm sure we can very well. Uh, Roz, I think uh, I don't know Bristol very well, although I've been there several times, and clearly it's a port but not exactly on the coast, is it? No, the Br- Bristol is found on the Severn estuary on the west coast of England, very close to the border with Wales. Um, but it very much identifies, I think, as a port city. Yeah. Although the port area is not really a port anymore, is it? We have a, a what's called a floating harbour, which I think is the kind of the focal point right. of, of, of the main city centre. Yeah. What you see there are the huge warehouses, so this used to be very busy, didn't it? Yes, I think um, in terms of thinking about how Bristol identifies itself as a as a port city, that's where, I suppose, the the great wealth of the city and the trade centre of the city has, has come from, developed even from the 18th century, where it was really beginning as a city itself. And that was um, sugar? I think the main um, trade was in tobacco Ah, and in sugar in particular. And I think if if the trade, if I'm right about this, there will be transatlantic trade. And probably somewhere in the background there, it means slaves, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, So Bristol, along with London, was one of the main ports in one corner of the slavery triangle Um, between um, the West Indies and America and, um, I suppose, mainly Britain. Yeah. And some of the trade involved West Africa as well. Yes. That's how we get the triangle, isn't it? Yeah. Um, What about, um, I mean, obviously that brought a lot of wealth to Bristol. What about how you can see this wealth today? I think one of the distinctive features of Bristol as a British city, is the amount of Georgian architecture in the city. Um, there's There are many big townhouses which kind of characterise the city's landscape. Um, and much of that grew up from slave traders who were working in, in the city. And that's where a lot of that wealth has come from. So Georgian, that means the 18th century? Yes, early 18th century yeah, architecture. So these are the uh, actually German monarchs in origin, aren't mm-hmm. they? The uh, Hanoverians, yes, George the yes. First, Second, Third, etc. Yes, yes. So quite a lot of that has survived in Bristol. It's difficult for me to say that. I mean, Bristol was hit very heavily in the Second World War, yeah. um, so a large portion of that um, is is no longer visible. But in the northern part of the city, and in, in areas such as Clifton and Hotwells, which are right in the north of the city, you can see a lot of that architecture still intact. Right. Um, slavery, obviously, is a very controversial topic. Um, it doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. In fact, the British government announced recently they're going to intensify efforts to abolish slavery in the UK today. Mm-hmm. So it's still with us. But what about in Bristol? Controversial there? 
Oh, yes, ab absolutely. I think um, when you were asking about the sort of the legacy, I suppose, yeah. and, and the wealth coming out of, of, of slavery from the 18th century, one of the things that's really visible in Bristol is the name of one particular slave trader called Edward Colston. Right. Um, and yeah. he was operating um, in the late 17th, early 18th century. And he was a slave trader and he was also a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. And he donated an awful lot of money to the cathedral in Bristol, to churches, um, as well as setting up almshouses, so um, shelters for the poor and schools. Oh, yes. Um, and so he was really recognised right up till the 19th century as a great philanthropist who'd given an awful lot. Yes. to Bristol. And the result of this was that um, many roads, institutions um, were named after Colston right. in Bristol. So we have um, Colston School, Colston Girls School, we have Colston Road, Colston Street, and so on and so forth. There's a concert um, hall? Well. There is Colston, Colston Hall, which yeah. is the main concert hall in the city. Yeah. Um, so that was, the, I suppose, the legacy going into the 19th century, a big name of, mm. of, of someone who's seen as a philanthropist in yeah. the city. Now, more recently, the name Colston has come to be seen um, a little bit less positively, <laughs> um, because the extent to which Colston's philanthropy actually came from wealth gained through his own involvement as a quite prominent slave trader yes. has really come to light. Yeah. Um, well, there is a statue. Of him, there is there? in the city centre, yeah. right in the middle of the city. Um, there is a statue of Edward Colston, and I think there's actually a plaque on that on that statue. I can't remember the wording exactly, but it it states that this statue was um, erected and paid for by the people of the city ah. in gratitude to the philanthropy of yeah. Edward Colston, right. and this was erected in the 19th century. Yeah. More recently, there's been an awful lot of controversy around that statue in I particular, can imagine, yes. um, because it's a, a statue which now is not seen to be commemorating philanthropy, but actually being a, a kind of celebration of the wealth that was gained through the slave trade yes. and through involvement in the slave trade. But I think there is also a statue of a slave, isn't there, down near the dock area? There is. That's a much more recent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a much more recent. Um, installation there is also down in the harbour now i'm not going to, be able to remember the name there is a bridge in the harbour which yeah. has been named after a slave who was um in the city in, again in the 18th century he lived in what's now known as the georgian house yes. in the city and yeah. this was constructed i think in 1999 this right. is a pedestrian bridge across the harbour i remember it, was, it but i can't remember the no, name can I? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was it was it was to commemorate and to recognize the impact yes. and the involvement of bristol in in the slave trade yeah well thank you very much that's a little bit of history um next time we come together i think we'll bring it right up to date and you can tell us what a wonderful place bristol is to live in now Thank you very much, Roz. That's all for today. Goodbye, dear listeners. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.